So Parallels 20.2 has a new feature which allows you to run x86 virtual machines on Apple Silicon ARM chips. So if you've got an M series chip, then this is something that you can go ahead and play around with. However, just be aware that the performance of this virtual machine software is very slow. This is actually a preview feature only. So at the time of recording, it's not really usable for anything actually performant. This is just something that you can experiment around with and we're limited quite a lot in what we can do. I don't seem to have an internet connection and we can't plug in external USB drives and we have to use a specific version of Windows 10 in order to test out the x86 features. But I'm gonna show you how to do this all today. So the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and click the link at the top of the video description. Every single purchase that's made after clicking this link is going to help to support this channel and the content that I create. So once we click on the link and click go to site, so here we're going to be taken to the Parallels website. And what we're going to do is click the buy now button. And if we scroll down here, we'll be able to make a selection between the standard edition and the pro edition. So at the moment, I recommend downloading the pro edition, which unlocks additional features. And if you're worried about price, what you can do is to enter the coupon code AppleWiki10 and you can get a discount from there as well. However, if you are interested in just trying this out for the very first time, you can actually just go ahead and use the free trial. You can click the try free button and here we can make full use of a 14 day free trial here. Just enter your email address, agree to the terms and conditions and press the submit button. If you do decide to make a purchase eventually, remember to use my link in the description to help support this channel. So here we'll be taken to the parallels trial screen here. I'm going to click on download parallels desktop and that started the download process. So all we need to do now is to minimize and then we're going to go ahead and install parallels. So click on finder here, click on downloads, and then we're going to find the install parallels desktop DMG. We're going to double click, and then we're going to double click on install parallels desktop, click on the open button here, and then click allow. And then we're going to accept the end user licensing agreement, click on enable. And here we can choose whether we want to submit data, click enable or disable. And now it's downloading the parallels software. So just wait for that to finish. Here it's now saying it's installing. And here we're going to enter our password. Just type that in. Here it's initializing. So here it's going to ask us to create a new virtual machine. Machines. And you can actually go ahead and download a multitude of different operating systems, including different versions of Mac OS. So at this stage, if we want to use an x86 virtual machine, we have to use Windows 10. And what I'm going to do is to point you in the direction of this knowledge base article from Parallels themselves, which is going to give you all the information about x86 VMs run through Parallels. And if we want to do this, then we want to be following this section here, how to create a new virtual machine from an ISO with Intel based operating system. So the first step we're going to do is to download the x86 64 bit ISO image and we're going to be using Windows 10 because that's the only one that's supported. So I'm going to download this first. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. I'm going to select the multi-edition ISO, press confirm, and this is going to go ahead and validate. And then we're going to select our language where we're going to select international, click confirm, and uh, this is validating again. And then we want to download the 64-bit version. So click on this, and then this is going to start the download process. So just give that a second. I'm going to download this one. So just give that a bit of time. This is 5.7 gigabytes. And then what we're going to do here is to open up a terminal window. So I'm going to click on Spotlight, type in Terminal, and then I'm going to open up a window here. So it's going to put these side by side, and then we're going to enter these commands. So we're going to be copy and pasting these and doing this one by one. So, so here we're gonna copy and paste this and we'll put this in our terminal window and we're just gonna change a few things here. So I'm gonna use the suggested naming here. So we're gonna change the, the VM name to Win10 and then we're gonna set the distro as Win-10 and then make sure there's a gap there and then setting the CPU type to x86, so press return. So it says here the VM has been successfully created and then we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste this. And then we're gonna paste this command here. And then we're gonna go ahead and make changes here. So just using the keyboard to move the cursor here. We're gonna go back to our VM name and then change this to Win10. And then we're gonna change the ISO path here. So I'm gonna delete this. And then we're gonna get our finder window and then go to our downloads folder. And then we have our file here, this ISO file. So we're gonna drag and drop this making sure our cursor is there. And then just gonna move the cursor here, make sure there's only one space between them. And uh, basically that's the path and then that's the command. So now we're gonna press return. And then saying here that the VM has been successfully configured. And then we're gonna use this command and we're gonna start the Win10 virtual machine that we created, press return. So we created a new virtual machine. So this is now booting up. It 
So here we're going to go through the standard installation process, click next, and then install now. So when you're clicked in the screen here, you can press Control and Alt to free the cursor. So there's the Control or Option key, and then we can get this working. I'm just going to continue the setup, press Next, press I don't have a product key, and then we're going to go ahead and install Windows 10 Pro, might as well, press Next. Here we'll agree to the licensing terms. Do a custom install, and then we're going to install it into the unallocated space. It's going to automatically format a virtual drive for us. If you ever want to escape the cursor, you can see the instructions here. Press Control and Alt, or that's the Option key, and then your cursor can escape from the window. You might want to do this because this is going to take quite a long time to complete because we're emulating x86 64-bit Windows on an ARM silicon chip, and uh, this is going to take a very long time. So now it's gone through this system setup and we're going to go and select our region, press yes. Here it's saying just a moment and we're going to select our keyboard layout, skip this. Here it's asking to connect to the internet, just say I don't have internet. Here we're going to continue with limited setup. Now I'm just going to add my username and you can create a password if you want to. And uh, here we're going to say no to this, no to this, and then, and then accept this, accept that. Then this is just the standard Windows 10 setup. And then we'll press not now to Cortana. And now we finally booted up into the x86 version of Windows 10. So this is actually capable of running basically anything an x86 operating system like Windows 10 can run. However, just be aware that even if you're running this on a very powerful Apple Silicon chip like the M3 Max like I'm doing here, it's actually going to run very slowly at this time. Even doing basic stuff like clicking on the network settings and looking on your settings menu is going to be slow. We also don't have uh, internet connection here or the ability to add in USB ports. So we're going to be quite limited in what we can do out of the box. Here, for example, I'm trying the built-in version of Microsoft Solitaire and it seems to run okay. You can see the animations don't render at 60 frames per second. It is slow because of the virtual machine. The ending animations are also a little bit slow as well. So you can see these cards bouncing around at the end of the game. And it's not as fast as it should be, I suppose, but we are still in the very early preview stages of x86 virtual machine through parallels. So this is a start. And if you want to try out more performance Windows 11 ARM virtual machines, then these can actually emulate x86-64 using the Prism translation layer. If you want to find out how to do this, you can actually run high-end applications like games. This is actually GTA Online using the Battle Eye Anti-Cheat and is actually playable on a Mac using Parallels. If you want to find out how to do this, then make sure to follow the link in the description for my full video tutorial. Anyway, I hope you found this x86 tutorial useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.